And Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day. Also, has a great newsletter. Now, the newsletter, very easy to get, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You hit newsletters, you're going to see it on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. You can get it for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of information out there. It's a true education when you go over there. You get the newsletter. You're going to get the whole education at the same time. If it works for you, awesome. If for some reason it doesn't work for you, guess what? You get your money back. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Just good football. Well, sort of good football. Pretty good weekend, with the exception of the uh, the Giants game. That was kind of seemed to be over pretty quick. I know, and he was almost coming back, and then it just went again. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah seriously. Yeah. But, but 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 good football. The Jaguars, you know, they they held up pretty well against Kansas City. Yep. Uh, you know, Holmes. I don't. You know, pretty amazing to play with a high sprain like he did. Isn't that, so. a, folks, if you didn't see what Steve's talking about, it's unbelievable, man. This Holmes, he's the next Brady anyway. I mean, I think he is. He's just unbelievable. He was limping, folks. He's got, he's got one down, he fires it. It was like, wow, that was amazing, man. I know. No, it, it is. So it'll really be amazing to see, you know, whether at heels somehow in time uh, this weekend. If it does, it's just simply miraculous. Uh, but, you know, they're using the most advanced technology. They're probably using, you know, different injections and yeah. so forth. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, what's it called? PRP, uh, hormone or replacement therapy, stuff like that, you know, to help out. So it'll be interesting. So, but I'm going with the Eagles in the finals. I'm going with the Eagles and the, uh, the Eagles and the uh, Bengals. Um, so we'll see. You know, the, the, you know that would be a good game. Yeah, San Francisco is, uh, you know, they've been playing pretty well, all things considering. You know, got this 23-year-old quarterback out there, Brock. Yes. And, uh, but I, I still think the way the Eagles are, have been playing, um, you know, just so strong. I, I, even though they're, you know, they're giving up the home field advantage, I, I'd like to see the Eagles win after, after the year that they've had. And, you know, and look, Kansas City's playing at home, so they have the advantage, even, even if Mahomes isn't there. But uh, the way Cincinnati is playing, I, I think it would just be great to see them. Them, uh, I think uh, you're right, man. And the yeah. Eagles came back with a vengeance, man. There's no doubt. Yeah. That's like, yeah. okay. They, yeah. they are good. So last week when we were talking about, uh, last week or the week before, I think last week was a holiday, but the week before, um, we were talking about the different, oh, I brought up the third year of a presidential cycle. Okay. So one of the tools that I use here, now I don't have to do all this work on my own. I'm just able to go utilize these tools from the folks at SeasonX. And this chart here for the NDX 100, Tom, this shows how it has performed during the third year of a presidential cycle. Cycle. Last time we took a look at it, it was for the Dow, which had taken back to the 1800s. So it gave us a lot of data points here. It's not as many data points, but the point is that this suggests that the low for 2023 may be in. And that was one of the things that you and I talked about the last time that, uh, that yes. we were together out here. So if we take a look at just simply the average seasonal cycle during the last 37 years for the NDX 100, its pattern looks like this. And it would also suggest that the low for 2023 may be in. So what's really important here, I'm not here to tell you whether it's guaranteed to be in or not. It's just that until those lows get taken out, these two charts here tell you about the seasonality. Now, if the, if the, uh, uh, if the so-called recession talks um, are, are really going to kick in, they haven't kicked in with the way that the NDX 100 typically responds during recessionary periods. Now, again, here, because I have a limited number of years, I can only go back to 1986 with the data. You know, I've got the recessionary years as 1990, 2001, 7, 8, 9, of course, and then in 2020 out here. And that's what the pattern looks like. And this is not what, our, what the NDX 100 looks like right now. So not that this can't kick in. But the thought about the recession and what it might do to the stock market, it's just not playing out as we speak, at least as of January the 23rd out there. Um, 
Let me get back here. So instead, what the NDX is doing today, now I'm not going to be taking a look at short-term time frame charts out here. The 10-minute, you, you covered that out there. But if I take a look at what the NDX 100 is doing today, and here we're just taking a look at the Qs. So everybody can produce these charts themselves on their system. Right now, now this was taken, a snapshot, Tom, about an hour ago. If the Qs closed above 284.69, it appeared that it would have the volume as it's passing its uh, swing point. Now, the swing point volume there was uh, 4 47.7 million. You probably can look to let me yeah, know where no, we're at will. half an hour. It will. Okay. We'll have it. Yep. It'll have the volume. So this is signaling to just an A to B equals CD land. Uh, this is suggesting that they move might up. Uh, we might see a move up to 298.85. That's the first initial price projection. I would say the way that the NDX or the Qs have moved off of that C point of this A to B equal CD pattern, chances are price will exceed the one to one level. Now, it's only Monday. And this snapshot, again, was taken a few hours ago before the market started to pull back a bit. But the queues right now, and it doesn't really matter what it's doing on a Monday. It matters what it's going to do on Friday. But price, if you take a look at that center chart there, price is trading above its descending price channel and the top of its profile. So that's signaling to us that there may be a change in trend. This is going to be important on Friday, not Monday at 324 in the afternoon. If we look at a monthly time frame chart, it actually has a confirmed A to B equal CD to the downside with a price target down in the 194 four level out there so its b point was actually taken out with volume however what the monthly chart for the queues also show and here we're just going to take a look at the upper right hand panel tom one of the tools as you know that i use to help us identify tops and bottoms are the td9 count patterns and this here folks and i, I teach that to to everybody it's an easy pattern to understand you really want to learn it here we can see that on the monthly time frame chart so even though we've got an a to b equals cd to the downside on a monthly basis we also have a TD9 count bottom. Which one's going to win out? I, I don't know the answer to that, but it helps us to go take a look at shorter term time frames because they can assist us. So we already looked at the daily time frame that has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. That's really shown here in the bottom right hand uh, panel out here. So that's what's going on there. The weekly chart shows a nice roads momentum indicator bottom and a TD9 count bottom. That's the lower left. So it's got that nice solid lows out there to suggest that it's possible that the low for 2023 is in, and that's the last October's low out there. But that that is a very solid bottom. So here's what we've learned. The third year of a presidential cycle is very bullish for the NDX 100, and the low should be in for the year. The normal seasonal cycle pattern over the last 37 years for the NDX 100 is very bullish. The NDX 100 is not following the recessionary template that we showed out there. Um, the daily queues are going to confirm an A to B equals CD should get us up to the 298 level. The weekly chart has a nice, is a breaking out of its uh, descending price channel. Again, we won't know more until Friday. The weekly chart shows a nice TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And even though the monthly shows a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, it also has a nice TD9 count bottom. So what do we do next? Well, let's go take a look at the top eight weightings of the NDX 100. The only two that um, are suggesting a potential short-term top are Apple and Tesla. I mentioned the TD9 counts. Here we have today both Apple and Tesla completing TD9 counts. So my expectation is we will see Apple and Tesla pull back. Apple to the 136.51 level, Tesla around 124.48. So that's my overall analysis of the uh, NDX100 and the Qs. Um, that's a great update, Steve. You know, it's amazing. What I, I love the best, I'm telling you that this whole thing about the NDX is not saying a recession, it's like, in our trading career, I've never seen anything like this in my life. That it's gonna be a recession, gonna, and it's like, okay, well, I don't know about that. There's not, there's a lot of jobs out here, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Have a great one, Steve. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Take Stay care. right there, folks.